Hello everyone. Now this is video number two of our day and now we're going to be talking about gas mixtures and partial pressures. So if we look in your notes, it says Dalton's law states that in a mixture of gases, the total pressure exerted by the mixture is equal to the sum of the individual partial pressures of each gas. And the general formula that we're going to use here is P total, meaning the total pressure, is equal to the pressure of the first gas, the second gas, the third gas, and so on and so forth. So let's look at an example. A 2.5 liter flask at 15 degrees Celsius contains a mixture of nitrogen, helium, and neon at a partial pressures of 0 0.320 atmospheres for nitrogen, 0 0.150 atmospheres for helium, and 0 0.420 atmospheres for neon. Calculate the total pressure for the mixture. So literally, all we are going to do is add together the pressures. P total is going to equal 0.32 atmospheres of nitrogen and 0.15 atmospheres for helium and 0 0.420 atmospheres for neon. And if we add these three pressures up, we will get the total pressure, which is 0.89 atmospheres. So that's our total pressure. So Dalton's law literally is as easy as adding up the pressures that are given in a word example. Now, another way to solve for total pressure is if individual moles of gases were given. Assuming that each gas has the same temperature and occupy the same volume, the equation can be simplified to what we see in front of us right here, which is the total pressure is equal to the total number of moles times a gas constant, the temperature over total volume. So the total pressure at a constant temperature and a constant volume is determined by the total number of moles of gas present, whether that total represents just one substance or a mixture of substances. And that's what we're going to look at here in our next example. So if we look at this example, it says a mixture of two grams of oxygen at STP and 3.25 grams of SO2 exerts how many atmospheres of pressure inside a two liter container at 300 Kelvin. All right, so the first thing that we need to do here is, of course, the usual, convert to moles. So I have 2.00 grams of oxygen gas, and I know that the gram formula of oxygen is 32 grams of oxygen for one mole of O2, and if I work that out, I get 0 0.0625 moles of O2, and I'm not going to worry about significant figures here. This is part of an equation, so I'm not going to truncate it at all. Then I'm going to look at my other gas, which is 3.25 grams of sulfur dioxide. Do the same thing right here, one mole of sulfur dioxide. What's the gram formula of S? Hey, that's 64 grams of SO2. Then I'm going to work this out, making sure I can cancel my units down into the right. So this is 0 0.0508 moles of SO2. So now I have my moles of oxygen. I have my moles of SO2. So now what I can do is I can plug it into that formula to find the total pressure. So P total is equal to the addition of these two moles together. So 0 0.0625 moles of O2 plus 0 0.0508 moles of SO2. And then finally, I'm dealing with technically moles, liters, Kelvin. I'm finding atmosphere. So my gas constant that I'm going to use here is 0 0.0821 for my gas constant. My temperature is 300 Kelvin and then I'm going to divide that by two liters. So as we can see here, basically we have the ideal gas law. If we think of PV equals NRT, here is my N portion, there's my R, there's my T, and I just moved my V over here. So if I work this out for my P total, 
And let's see, looks like three significant figures here. I should get 1.39 atmospheres. So this specific example goes over the idea of getting masses of gases, converting them into moles, putting them in for N, using our other uh, pieces of information provided us to us in the equation to solve for total pressure. Okay, now let's talk about partial pressures and mole fractions. I need to teach you what mole fractions are first. So Dalton's law of partial pressure assumes that each gas behaves independently of other gases in a container. That being the case, the amount of a given gas can be related to its partial pressure. So this P1 here is representing the pressure of an individual gas over the total pressure. And then we have our, technically, the rest of our ideal gas law. The, this is the moles of that individual gas times the gas constant, temperature in Kelvin, divided by volume. And here for total pressure, this is the total moles of the gas, R constant, temperature, and volume. What you can realize here, though, if, since we have these over each other, is that the gas constant basically cancel each other out, the temperatures cancel each other out, and the volumes cancel each other out. So really what we're left with is this thing right here, and that is known as our mole fraction. So the, basically the moles of an individual gas over total moles, and that will equal x, which is our mole fraction mole fraction. So the ratio of N1 over NT is called the mole fraction of, a, of gas 1, which is denoted as X sub 1. So that is the mole fraction of that one particular gas. The mole fraction has no assigned dimensions, and that's a good thing to know, but expresses the ratio of the number of moles of one component, or an individual gas, to the total number of moles in the mixture. Assuming that volume and temperature are constant, volume and temperature are constant. The equation can be rearranged to the following. So here's the pressure of the individual gas, which is equal to the moles of the individual gas over total moles times the total pressure. So we can simplify this by just saying x sub 1 times total pressure. So the partial pressure of a gas in a mixture is the mole fraction times total pressure, and we're going to use that now in a couple of our examples. So let's look at this example right here. A mixture of gases contains 4.46 moles of neon, 0 0.740 moles of argon, and 2.15 moles of xenon. Calculate the partial pressures of the gases if the total pressure is two atmospheres at a certain temperature. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is we know that we're going to be calculating partial pressures of each of these gases. So we're going to need to figure out a mole fraction. So it's worth taking a moment and saying to yourself, all right, I have 4.46 moles of neon. I have 0 0.740 moles of argon and 2.15 moles of xenon. So I'm going to add these all together to get a total moles. So if I add these all up, I get 7.35 for my moles total, because I'm going to need to refer back to that. So if I wanted to figure out the individual partial pressures for each one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, here's the pressure of neon. So pressure with a subscripted NE, showing that this is the partial pressure for neon. And I'm going to put in my mole fraction. So that is my moles of neon, which is right here. So 4.46 moles of neon over the total moles, which I calculated over here, which is 7.35 moles total times the pressure, the total pressure, which is two atmospheres. So two atmospheres. So if I do 4.46 divided by 7.35 times two, I will get a partial pressure of 1.21 atmospheres. That's the partial pressure for neon. Now let's go on and look at the partial pressure of argon. So I'm gonna do P sub A R, okay? And I look back at my formula and 0 0.740 moles of argon. There it is right there. So 0 0.740 moles of argon. My total moles is 7.35 moles. 
And again, I'm going to multiply that times my total pressure, which is two atmospheres. And if I work this out, I'll get 0 0.20 atmospheres. And then finally, for my last gas, which is xenon, it's the partial pressure of Xe. So if I look back at my problem again, it says 2.15 moles of xenon. So 2.15 moles of Xe at the top over total pressure, which is 7.35 moles times the total pressure. Again, total pressure is two atmospheres. So two atmospheres. And if I work this all out, get 0 0.59 atmospheres. And in a perfect world, these, if I add these up together, they will add up to, hey, look at that, two atmospheres, because that is my total pressure. That is what my total pressure should add up to. And that's my basically my check to make sure that I've done it right. Let's look at another example. A mixture of gases at two atmospheres and at 273 Kelvin contains 0.7 moles of nitrogen, 0.3 moles of oxygen. Calculate the partial pressure of each gas in the mixture. Again, what I would suggest that you do is you start out with your total number of moles, so your end total. So I look at this and it's 0 0.700 moles of N2 and 0 0.300 moles of O2. So if I add those together, I get, hey, crazy, one mole total one mole total. All right, so now I need to figure out the partial pressure of each of the gases mentioned here. So I'm going to have P sub N2, and I'm going to take the individual pressure of the nitrogen, so 0 0.700 moles of N2 over, that's a two, over my total pressure, which is one mole, and I'm going to multiply that times the total pressure, which in this case, oh, well, surprise, surprise, it's two atmospheres again. Um, original. So I'm going to do 0.7 divided by 1 times 2. Hey, that's 1.4 atmospheres. And let's do the other one. We have to do oxygen. So the partial pressure of oxygen is, I look up here, and it's 0 0.300 moles of O2 all over 1 mole total. And I multiply that times my total pressure, which is two atmospheres. And if I do 0.3 times two, I'm going to get 0.6 atmospheres. And again, my check here is if I add these two pressures together, do I get my total pressure? And boom, yes, I do. And that is my check.